the news. Governor Odudu signs over 29 billion naira contract with two construction firms to control erosion in Kogi State. Federal government approves Thursday as additional public holiday to celebrate Eid al-Fitr. Bus full of passengers swept away by raging waters in Kenya floods. And in sports, Nigeria's junior football team denied visas to attend tournament in Spain. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Joshua Adinoi. Thanks for joining us. The federal government has approved Thursday as an additional public holiday to celebrate this year's Eid al-Fitr. A statement by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Interior, Dr. Aishetu Gogo Ndayako, stated that the Minister of Interior, Dr. Olubumitun Jojo, while congratulating the Muslim Umar for a successful completion of a month of spiritual rejuvenation, reiterated that President Bola Ahmed Sinubu is firmly committed to providing a safe and prosperous Nigeria for all. The government had earlier announced Tuesday and Wednesday for the celebration of Eid al-Fitr, but the crescent moon could not be spotted on Monday, prompting the extension of the holidays. Kogi State Governor Ahmed Usman Ododo has signed contracts with two construction firms to the tune of 29.9 billion naira for the commencement of civil works at Etahe, Omigo, and Angpa erosion sites across the three senatorial districts of the state. A breakdown of the contract shows that the sum for the Etahe Godi site in Okini local government area stands at 10.6 billion naira, while that of Omigo in Kababunu local government area is 9.8 billion naira. And the contract sum for Olubojo Goli site in Angpa local government area stands at 9.3 billion naira. A statement by the Commissioner for Information, Kingsley Fangwo, explained that Governor Ododo, while signing the contract, charged the contractors to live up to expectations. Governor Ododo, who was represented by the State Commissioner for Environment and Ecological Management, Joseph Stephen, called for all hands to be on deck to ensure that the projects are executed to specification for the benefit of the communities. He also stated that the project is funded by the Kogi State Government in partnership with the World Bank Acresal Project. Ododo praised the efforts of the State Project Coordinator of Acresa, Ladi Jato, and her team for their efforts that led to the success of the project signing for the commencement of the work. Earlier in her welcome address, Barista Ladi Jato expressed delight over the signing of the contract for the Goli reclamation, stabilization, and channeling of three sites across the state. Kogi State Government, in collaboration with the World Health Organization, WHO, and other development partners, has marked the 2024 World Health Day in Lokoja, the state's capital. The 2024 celebration, which has the theme, My Health, My Right, was an opportunity to create and provide adequate support for improved health services across the state. The Public Relations Officer of the State Ministry of Health, Dorothy Onoja, in a statement, said the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Adams Abdulaziz Adeza, appreciated both the past and present administration of Kogi State for the support and creation of adequate healthcare facilities in the state, even at the grassroots level. He expressed delight that this year's theme was chosen to advocate for the right of everyone, especially the people of the state, to enable them have access to quality health care services, good nutrition, safe drinking water, and clean air. Dr. Adams retreated that the state aims to access at least 205 primary health care centers, PHC, and its intervention to provide an obtainable financial system for easy accessibility, efficiency and affordability. He urged all stakeholders and development partners to refocus and pay more attention to primary health care centers in the rural communities across the state. Kogi State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Abdulaziz Adams Adeza, 
has debunked the rumor being speculated and spread on social media platforms of Lassa fever outbreak in the state. The commissioner in a statement noted that there is no case of Lassa fever outbreak in the last four weeks in Kogi State, explaining that the suspected case of a deceased student who was admitted to the Federal Teaching Hospital, Lokoja, did not die of Lassa fever. According to the commissioner, the student died of her magic fever and those who came in contact with him had been isolated. Dr. Abdulaziz noted that the deceased student complained of fever and bleeding from the gum and was being investigated and managed while samples was taken and sent to NCDC Abuja but lost his life before the result was released. The commissioner said the result came out to be negative of Lassa fever and advised members of the public to disregard the report as no case of Lassa fever has been reported in Kogi State. Kogi State Governor Medusman Ododo has praised the efforts of the Nigerian Navy in combating activities of criminal elements in the state. The governor stated this during the handing over of suspects arrested with tons of metrological coal at the Ajakuta Steel Complex jetty to the Nigerian police by the Nigerian Navy ship NNS Lugard in Ajakuta. Represented by Special Advisor on Media Ismaila Issa, Governor Dudu said the commitment of personnel of the Nigerian Navy has led to improved security on the waterways and across the state with several arrests of criminals made by the Navy. Governor Dodo commended the synergy between the Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian police and other security agencies in the state and restricted his administration's zero tolerance for criminal activities. He noted that government will continue to make Kogi State inhabitable for Ms. Grant, who may wish to test the resolve of his administration against crime. The governor urged security agencies to sustain the aggressive onslaught against criminal elements and urged citizens to be law-abiding and provide credible information to law enforcement agencies in the state. The governor also witnessed the handover of a suspected drug peddler arrested with substances suspected to be marijuana to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, at the NNS Lugard base in Banda, close to Lokoja local government area. The Executive Secretary of the Kogi State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, Mukhtar Atima, says the state has received approximately 95% of the palliative items from the federal government through the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. Atima in a statement noted that the food items allocated to the state have not been fully received due to delays caused by the transporters engaged by the federal government, stating that such has resulted to delay in the strategic and timely distribution plan put in place by the state government. He stressed that once the food items are fully received, the distribution to the vulnerable across the state will commence. The Permanent Secretary, Kogi State Ministry of Culture and Tourism, Dr. Zainab Obadaki David, has assured that the ministry will become productive for the benefit of the people of the state. Dr. Zainab, who gave the assurance in a meeting with the directors and heads of parastatus in Lokoja, said the ministry will no longer be called a dry ground ministry calling for more commitment of all for the realization of the set goals and objectives of the new administration of Ahmed Usman Ododo. The Permanent Secretary consequently gave room for open deliberation on challenges that might prevent the staff from performing their duties effectively with a view to providing solutions to move the ministry forward and boost the revenue generation of the state. She urged the management to cooperate with her, adding that teamwork was important to achieve greater success. We go on a short break now. We'll be right back. It's new, fresh, and hygienic. It's Umzi Soya Vegetable Oil. Umzi Soya Vegetable Oil is hygienically processed to nourish our bodies, contains the most needed nutrients for healthy living. Umzi Soya Oil has omega-6, iron, zinc, 
and vitamins E and K, among others, that help to maintain cholesterol levels, strengthen the immune system, healthy bones, improve skin health, and many more. It does not foam, fume, or congeal. It is a refined cooking oil for consumers, retailers, and wholesalers. To buy Umzi Soya oil, quickly go to Umzi Soya Vegetable Oil Station along Shetima Barracks Road beside Otokiti Estate Gate. With Umzi Soya Vegetable Oil, you and your family are more healthy and stronger. For more information, please call 0706-7213-4171 or 0806-058-0048. Umzi Soya Vegetable Oil, satisfying customers at a reduced cost. Buy Umzi Soya Vegetable Oil today and thank me later. Umzi Soya Oil, option for high heat cooking with health benefits. Welcome back. Nigerians have been called upon to always approach health professionals whenever they are facing health challenges. Chief Executive Officer and founder of a non-governmental organization known as Rally's Care Initiative, Raliat Okino, made the call in an interview in Lokoja, Kogi State Capital. The CEO, while commenting on the 2024 World Health Day celebration, described the theme, My Health, My Right, as apt, noting that it was important for the people to take responsibility for their health, even as government also play their part in ensuring that the people gain access to quality health care. World Health Day is a global health awareness day to enlighten the world generally on a healthy lifestyle and well-being. It is very important for us to take care of ourselves because your health is your responsibility. A healthy, a healthy people make up a healthy nation. Our health is our responsibility. Our health is our wealth. We need to take care of our health very, very well. We need to eat the right food. We need to rest and sleep adequately. We need to avoid smoking and avoid drinking alcohol in order for us to live healthy and even younger. While commending health workers worldwide in their effort at delivering the needed results, she enjoined them to sustain their effort at giving life more meaning and ensuring a healthy society for all. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, has said it should be the priority of power distribution companies to meter all customers on band A feeders. This came barely one week after the NERC approved over 300% tariff hike for over 1.8 million band A customers. NERC Vice Chairman Dr. Mosiliu Oseni highlighted the Commission's metering plan at a meeting with civil society organizations and community-based organizations in Abuja. Oseni explained that about 15 to 20 percent of the Band A customers were unmetered, stating that the federal government and the Nigerian electricity supply industry have various initiatives to ensure the metering of the Band A customers. Band A customers are those who enjoy a minimum of 20 hours of electricity daily, according to the NERC. Many traders and business owners at the Lagos State Popular Market, Idumota, Dosumu Street precisely, have been thrown into turmoil as over 10 warehouses were raised down by fire. A reporter who tracked the incident through a sister station News Central in the afternoon of Tuesday reported that the fire started from a printing press shop whose generator sparked with fire while trying to fuel it. It was reported that the shop owner immediately threw the generator set from the fourth floor to the ground floor as the fuel splits affecting houses on the street where 14 buildings were raised down. According to some of the occupants, goods worth billions of naira were burnt in the inferno. Eyewitnesses who spoke with journalists called on the government for urgent intervention to put a stop to its reoccurrence, stating that it was not the first time the market was gutted by fire. is in order for yesterday. The same thing happened and uh, what is it called? The same area like this about this fire. But we don't know what causes it. And by around 
three o'clock this evening, like play. We are just seeing smoke from smoke now. And the, the, the first building from the first building to the second, you are sad, to the second building. But the scene is still getting worse. Then we are just trying to bring out the old. And from there, fire, fire, fire service came around to support the motion. And they tried, they cannot be able. Still now, the place is still catching fire. We don't know what Nigeria or all the nation can do. How to be building house very close. I see, assuming this building is not close, all this kind of thing cannot happen. As long as they give five minutes to another building, at least there can be opportunity to have this life. Because the building have come to get up. Only this small breeze have transferred to the other building. And you see, thank God that people are not inside. People also waiting for, uh, waiting for the talk. And at the most place for uh, inside our land, like the Tiapo, you hear Ojo, 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 Go, 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 try, everybody try, but this thing go, you say they sell, uh, what is it called, uh, building material, uh, uh, the same problem we're having the last time, of course, here again, there is no enough equipment for these people to work, when the water is finished, they have to go two hours again to get us another water, before they can quench the fire, it's not making sense, millions of of goods have been vanished here. My bus shop, monogram, 6 head 2 borderless machine, everything is gone. With the carelessness of the government, because they are not giving us good quality work here. This is the second time, or third, fourth time, this kind of something is happening in Dosumuye. This is my working place. This is where I house you every good day. And I'm a printer. So I'm begging the Lagos State Government, not here alone, Whenever anywhere fire outbreak is occurring, please let there be good and enough equipment for them to work so that they could quickly quench the fire. From one building to another, to another, to another. Now we have almost seven buildings that has been damaged. That has been damaged. Like we now that have collected work from customers, we've dropped in our office. All the polo, the towers, they have all got burnt. And it's like a death to us. So we are urging the Lagos State Government to please to look for help or look for one way or the other to assist us here. Please. This place should not just go like that. We are all people too. We have families to feed. We have children. We have mothers and fathers. Please, Lagos State Government, we really need your help, especially we youth that we are hustling on this street. This is this is what I've been asking for for the past five, seven years, more than ten years, sir. Please, we are begging your Lagos State government. We don't want this to be the end of us. Please help us out. This is where we are, this is where we feed our families too. And now it's getting bored, it's getting down. By now, I know Lagos State government will be planning to get rid of this place. That is not the solution for us. We Nigerians, we are not lazy. Like the said of Wari. We are not lazy at all. We are always trying our best. Please, Sawalu is Excellency Governor of Lagos State. Help us win a GIU to analyze. Look at this is not our fault. Though. This is not our fault. This is fire outbreak. And this is carelessness too. So please, we want the Lagos State government to look for tangible things to do for us. The National Coordinator National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, in Lagos State, Ibrahim Odlari Noye who confirmed the incident has this to say. Well, so far so good. About five buildings have gone down from the intensity of the fire. Uh, in the last five minutes, uh, two have gone down. Earlier it was two, but in the last five minutes, two have gone down. The third one was where the fire started from. It was alleged that somebody, a printer, simply called Uche, was trying to refuel his generator while the generator was on. From there, it caught fire. What happened between that time when the fire started and the fire crossing the road to affect other buildings is one we don't know yet. But it is a very, very challenging task that we are overcoming it now. So far, so good. Nobody, no injury or death has been recorded. So far, I said about more than 14. We can't ascertain until the whole fire has gone down. But as of now, more than 14 have been affected. And safety is much more important than looking for security. So Nigerians, especially traders, should look more into safety 
measures, insurance measures. Because the one that happened yesterday, the cry was that many of them just restock after Christmas uh, celebration. They just restock their wares. And now this happened. Within 24 hours, you are recording fire within the same vicinity. So it's, it's quite unfortunate. There are a lot of things that have gone wrong. You know, most of these buildings originally were residential areas. And the, the mark, the spaces that they're supposed to give to each other are not there. So that is one principal thing. Then the hurt for more security of the traders on their properties, instead of preparing safety or making them 50-50, they provide more security. The, the way they block it, the attachments on the walkway, on the staircase, you have different type of shops in those places. These are some of the challenges that firefighters are always facing in order to combat fire. We have provided, we met them uh, last week, we provide solutions to them, and the solution is still ongoing. We are going to work on it by the grace of God. Those affected called on the government to stage a fire service point in the market to avoid delay in their operation. On the foreign scene, emergency services have been rescuing passengers who were trapped in a bus that was swept away by flood on a busy highway in northern Kenya. The police said the bus with about 50 passengers was heading to the capital, Nairobi, from northern Wajir County. The driver had attempted to cross a flooded section of the road when it happened. The bus then became stuck in some mud surrounded by the raging waters. Some of the passengers were rescued from the roof of the vehicle. The Kenya Red Cross said it was a challenging rescue operation, stressing that it had collaborated with the members of the nearby community to reach the passengers, as two of its boats are continuing to rescue other commuters stranded as the road remained impassable. On sports, the Nigeria's Football Federation says members of the Nigeria Junior Football Team have been denied visas to attend a tournament in Spain. The visa deniers affected both players and officials of the under-15 football team, the Future Eagles. NFF in a tweet says the team would not be traveling to take part in the UEFA Under-16 Development Tournament but did not state the reason for the denier as the Spanish authorities are yet to comment on the development. The future Eagles were set to leave Nigeria on Tuesday ahead of their first match against Belgium on Friday. The 20 player squad was also due to play against Italy and England. The UEFA Under 16 Youth Development Tournament, which is organized by the Europe's football governing body, has been held since 2012. It is intended to expose elite junior players to international football and ease their transition into senior levels of the sport. Everton have been given an additional two-point deduction for a breach of the Premier League Profitability and Sustainability Rules, PSR. The decision followed a previous six-point PSR penalty imposed on Everton and left the club just two points above relegation zone with seven games left to play this season. On entertainment, the wife of the Kogi State Governor, Sefinat Ododo, has congratulated Aisha Salau Audu, the newly crowned Little Miss Kogi 2024. She praised Aisha's confidence, beauty and talent, highlighting the crucial role of parents in nurturing their children. She also appreciated the pageant organizers and reaffirmed government commitment to empowering the girl child. The first lady commended the parents of the new queen for doing a great job and urged them to continue to support their daughter's growth and development. Sefinat assured the organizers of the commitment of the present administration to support policies that prioritize the girl child's rights, protection, and empowerment. That is the size of our package for today. Do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV, MLC TV2, MLC TV Yoruba, and Ebirababe MLC TV, Instagram, MLC TV 2021, 
X handle Malakite TV and TikTok Malakite underscore TV. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement or sponsorship, please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakite TV online on weekends to watch our various programs. Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It's Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please, continue to be a brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Joshua Adenoy. Thanks for watching.